All right, y'all. Welcome to my high noon, my high performance at high noon call. I'm Jice Johnson, um, and I am a work-life integration strategist. I am really working on embracing this new title, y'all, because it is um, really exciting. I have continued each week to do more and more work in this space. And so, um, you know, really working from um, not necessarily changing this, the things that I do in Black economics, but more so um, enhancing what I do for myself um, and the things that bring me some passion and pleasure and and um, things that I that I really love to do. So, excited about that. Um, this call is every Wednesday at noon. And so thank you for joining me. Um, it is noon Mountain Standard Time, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And um, we're going to jump right in. So for those of you that are just joining me for the first time, welcome. And uh, just to give you a little bit of background, this call was started because a lot of times people ask me, how do I do all the things that I do? And I always tell them with... Uh, a little bit of grace, a lot of grace, and work-life integration. And so uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about my topic today, and then I'm going to open up for Q&A and just feedback or anything that, you know, um, you may have on your heart with, with relation to the topic, and we're going to jump right in. So today I want to talk about trauma and trust, and this has shown up so often in my life, um, and it still continues to show up in my life, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about it, um, in particular with how we think about like progressing into the new year. Um, and so one of the things that I recognize is when, like, what is trauma, right? Like, what constitutes as trauma. So there's a lot of versions of trauma, but the way that I like to think about trauma is really anything that kind of like caused you pause, right? Like something that shook your world one way or another. And so that could be, you know, on the high end, I mean, not on the high end, um, like, you know, really when we start to get in depth about what um, trauma can look like, we could be talking about things like death, um, abuse, you know, um, sexual abuse, physical abuse, mental abuse, things like that. But there are other types of traumas. Um, you know, I experienced like traumas in the military um, being bombed in Iraq, right? Things like that. And so what happens is, is that um, because we are highly adaptable, we are oftentimes in a position where we have learned to live with a significant amount of our traumas. But, you know, we talk a lot about healing and like, what does that healing space look like? Um, and recognizing that some things are more traumatic or may have may be traumatic in certain areas or how, how do I want to say what I'm trying to say? Some things are really, really traumatic in a way that show this like visible space and other things are traumatic that maybe don't always show up visibly for us in a way that allows us to think about um or, or see where that trauma is affecting us. So I want to talk about the trauma of trusting ourselves and how do we get to a place where oftentimes we don't trust ourselves or we don't trust our judgment, we don't trust our decision making. And for me, this has been kind of this lifelong space of not trusting decisions, for example. So, um, so you know, just kind of walking on, walking through this journey um, for myself a little bit here. Uh, when I was in the military, I was deciding, or when I left high school, I should say, I had decided that I was going to do 20 years in the military. Like this was my career path. 20 years, I'm going into the military. This is what it is. And I am on this journey. And three and a half years in, I am now um, facing a divorce. I am pregnant. Um, I am getting ready to make a decision to leave active duty military into something that I thought was this lifelong career. Then when I leave the military, um, uh, I leave for this man, um, that I end up literally not being with a month and a half after I have put in my paperwork in the military. So in my mind, I had this career, I had this plan mapped out. I had made these decisions. I had done all this work leading up to there. I had done four years in junior ROTC. I had signed on to the delayed entry program. So I knew a year before I even left for the military that I was going into the military and I had been active in this space of um, getting into uh, and I've been active getting into, you know, getting into this uh, 
into the military, making sure and through the delayed entry program that I was going to get this uh, promotion. So if you're not familiar with the military, you come in in these ranks, right? I Normally you come in, you start off as an E1. That's the lowest rank there is. That's where you start. Well, because I had done the delayed entry program, like I had been intentional. I had set my plan in place and I was working it. I came in as an E3. So I already had this promotion. I was not an E1. I wasn't an E2. I came in as an E3. Um, so I had you know, done all this work to have this thriving career in the military and three and a half years into what I thought was a 20 year career, I leave. I leave to start this family and this family is never started. I mean, my daughter is here, is me and her, but we never get married. We never move forward. Um, where, you know, it, it was a whole, for all intents and purposes, it was a whole shit show. And so now I am back at home living with my parents. I feel embarrassed. I feel um, a lot of uh, distrust not necessarily for myself, but just for everyone around me that said they wanted to help me. Um, I had really been struggling with my parents because at that time, um, you know, I mentioned that I had gone through a divorce. So I'm going through a divorce and also I'm now pregnant by somebody else and supposed to be getting married to that person, right? So I looked a mess in my early 20s, y'all. Like 2021, 20, 22, <laughs> it's a mess. It's a hot ass mess. But that being said, um, I think that was probably the first place that I stopped trusting my decisions. So going forward into that, I can ex I can see time and time and time and time again in my life where I put a plan in place and I work towards that plan and some decision that I made did not go the way that I wanted it to go. It didn't go the way I needed it to go. And now here I am mistrusting all of my decisions, so much so that I started to ask for external validation to make a decision as a leader. Hey, what do you think about this? I really started to grasp the concept of mentorship, like I needed mentorship because I had no idea what it was that I was doing, how it was that I was going to, you know, make a decision, if my decision was going to be sound, if my decision was going to be good. So I made like real estate decisions based off of the advice from other people. I made parenting decisions based off of the advice from other people. I, I made um, housing decisions based off the advice from other people. I made lifestyle changes to my diet, to the way that I worked out based off of the recommendations of other people. And not to say that recommendations are necessarily a negative thing. This isn't about like not being able to get help in, a, in an area or not being able to ask for advice, but it is the root cause of how we're seeking advice, how we're seeking validation, right? And it got to the point where I literally started like putting an outfit together and then taking a picture and being like, how does this look? What do you think? Because somewhere in here, I started to really struggle with being able to make a sound decision, being able to make a determination on whether or not I felt like that decision was good, how it was going to impact me, and then taking in other people's feedback even before anything has happened. Well, I don't know if I like that shirt. I think you should actually change that shirt to this color shirt. I think that would look better on you. And then me really going out to like make these changes in ways that begin to not be healthy. But more importantly, what started to occur for me was I actually stopped listening to my internal voice. The reason why this became a topic was because it begins to show up in so many ways in so many places for us, in particular from a leadership perspective or in business, where a lot of times the people that I'm talking to, I started to see the reoccurring pattern. And I said, I'm not the only person that is struggling with this, where I had people who were coming up to me and asking me business questions. And then they're telling me all the different feedback that they got. Well, this person told me this, and this person told me that, and I think I should do this, but the last Last time I did what I thought I should do, it didn't turn out well. And so I started to see how people begin to mistrust their own judgment and their own decisions. And so what, what brought this completely to the forefront, like these little things that happen, right? So if you're in Colorado, it just snowed. I sat here and I looked outside um, two days ago and I said, oh, I should pull my car into the garage. And I'm like, nah, I'm not going to worry about it. The next morning I come out and it snowed. And, and it, you know, now I got to uh, pull my car out of a mountain of snow, right? And I asked myself, I thought about it. Why didn't I listen to myself? Why didn't I listen to my inner voice? And I just waved it off. Um, I took a meeting all the way in downtown Denver 
I now live in Aurora, uh, Southeast Aurora at that. So think, you know, closer to like Southlands Mall. And so I said to myself, I think that's really far and I should look for something that's closer to the middle. I said, no, nah, I'm not going to worry about it. So what happened? I ended up picking up my kids late because I couldn't get back to my side of town on time. And I started asking myself, what is it that when you have that small internal voice that tells you something that you keep quieting that inner voice, even on the small decisions, even on something as small as maybe you should pull your car into the garage, what makes you decide not to listen to that inner voice and instead question or doubt what is what you are innately thinking, right? What you are innately feeling. And after I had that meeting and came back home late, I had a coaching call. And in my coaching call, I'm listening to a client express this similar situation for herself. She's having these doubts where she hears this inner voice and then she doesn't listen to that inner voice. And so I started digging. And I said, what do you think is causing that? And as she was talking, I'm, of course, I'm taking notes and coaching her, but I literally started to have this whole rehash of conversations that I had with myself, decisions that I had decided not to do, uh, or decisions that I needed external validation in order to move forward with, because somewhere throughout the course of my life, I stopped trusting my decisions. And I meditated on that last night, asking myself, where is the first place? How long ago was it the first time that you could actively remember making a decision that turned out horrific and stopped you from making decisions autonomously going forward? That stopped you from being intentional about thinking about how you make a decision and how that decision impacts you? Where is that first place? And I tracked that first place back. I tracked that first place back to nearly 20 years ago. And I asked myself, how has this shown up over the course of nearly two decades, that hurts me to say that I have 20 years of an adulthood. I'm not quite sure that I'm ready to embrace 40 yet, y'all just work with me. Um, but really, how has that shown up for nearly two decades for me in a space where I question every decision that I make? And I started to go back and think how many people say, oh, you live in your head. Oh, you think a lot. Oh, you process a lot. One of my coaches say, why do you overprocess? Like you're overprocessing. You're trying to think through every scenario. And I and I remember without thinking about it in this way, I remember saying to him, I said, yeah, because I want to make sure that I make the right decision. And I'm not sure that, you know, I have enough information to do that. And he said, you have so much information that you don't even know what to do with it. So, you know, I'm going to... um. I'm going to pause here and, you know, take, take, start taking in some feedback. Um, but is this something that you feel like shows up in your life? Do you feel like you have experienced trauma in, in the places where you make decisions that causes you to struggle to make decisions going forward? Do you see a place where you are asking for or seeking external validation? Do you see a place where maybe there are doubts or fears that pop up in your decision making that make you pause? Or maybe that you haven't launched some Something that you've been thinking about launching because you're not quite sure if you're going to be successful. Or maybe you have a, an area of your business that you want to um, excel in, or maybe you have that promotion that you want to go for, but you haven't made the move because somewhere internally, you still question yourself and you question your ability to make good and sound decisions. So I'm going to open it up and see what questions do you have? What comments or feedback do you have? Am I the only person that experiences this? I think for me, it's not always um, the fear of making the wrong decision, but I, I mean, I, of course I question myself. I think we all question ourselves, but I think as like a leader or someone who owns their own business, I think it's fear of judgment sometimes too. Um, mm -hmm. Because I think, especially like as a woman, we have so much more to lose with the decisions that we make. There's such a higher risk. And so I think for myself personally, I'm always thinking about how this is going to be, even if I know it's the right decision, it, how is it going to be perceived? And like, that always matters to me before I do something. I'm like, well, I have to make sure this is in alignment, that this is perceived this way. And so before I even get to the point of doing it, 
sometimes it's just even the thought process of getting there and making sure that every little thing is right because there's so much more on the line for us, I feel like. Absolutely. I have absolute struggle. I mean, it's that space. I won't necessarily call that um, perfectionism, right? Um, but it is to to some extent. And, I, and I've absolutely experienced that myself. You know, I think um, when I walked through the space where I was really struggling with what I would like, how I was physically presenting myself, like to your point as a woman, right? That's something that I still... Um, have walked through and I still receive feedback on like to this day. So um, if you don't know, that was AJ that was speaking and she is my fabulous photographer. Thank you for joining my call today. Um, And uh, so AJ is aware of like some of the more more recent pictures that we took. Um, And even like we had that conversation about like my choice of attire, right? And, you know, I wanted to wear something that was like a lot more feminine because over the years, I've gotten a lot of feedback about being masculine, which actually hurts my feelings. Like I'm not masculine. I'm a whole woman, guys. (laughs) Like, But, um, but that feedback, you know, has caused me even when I'm doing things like taking a photo shoot, right? And like, and sending AJ all my my outfits. Hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? Because, you know, how is this going to be perceived, right? And so to come outside in, you know, a fluffy dress when, you know, my typical attire for the last several years has been jeans and a t-shirt, like that was something that was scary. And to your point, it's not necessarily that it's a right or a wrong decision, but it does come into play about like, how is this perceived? And then how do I walk through the space of being comfortable enough to do it anyway? And so, yeah. So are there other um, thoughts, other, thank you for sharing that experience. Um, I also relate to that, like wanting to always kind of be in this mode where no one gets upset um, off of this, the decisions that I made. Um, And last year was my first year in brick and mortar. I had done eight years of business kind of behind the laptop, which was really low risk. But going brick and mortar kind of forced me to be in these positions where I was dealing face to face with people. And sometimes people weren't happy. And I would watch myself kind of shrink where, you know, there were moments where I maybe needed to stand up for myself and, and explain myself better. And I kind of shrunk into this place of like, Uh, like the negative self-talk would kind of come in and take the forefront and I would watch myself kind of revert back to this the little girl version of myself which really didn't serve me in business and there were so many challenges Uh, my business is seasonal so I got a lot of time to reflect after the tax season ended to kind of really see those moments and I did the exact same thing that you did kind of trace it back and for me it was more of my childhood of being you know, silenced and not having a voice and not having the right to speak up for myself and being pushed in these positions where I had to put safety. So when you talk about trauma, you know, it was showing up where I had upset customers and I would automatically assume that this person was going to resort to like physical violence against me. And they just maybe wanted to figure out maybe how they could get a refund or a discount. But in my my traumatic trigger was this person wants to hurt me, you know, just give them what they want so they'll go away. Um, and I recognize that, but I'm still kind of working on, you know, coming into the new tax season is like, I have a little bit of fear, like, how do I not you know, go back into that same space where I'm cowering and I'm not able to speak up and and explain to customers and um, give them feedback as well, because they're not always right. Sometimes they're really wrong. And how do I handle these situations where the little girl is showing up and not the woman who is a business owner who knows her, her craft and can speak and handle these difficult moments, but she's not showing up in the moment. She can after and she can reflect but in the moment she doesn't seem to want to show up. Yeah. That, yeah, I, you know, thank you for sharing that. I mean, it is, it is that, you know, it is that space, right? It is that trauma. And, and how do you begin to trust yourself through that trauma? And, you know, I always tell, you know, I, I, um, I, I left this post last night um, or early this morning. I went to, I went to bed pretty late last night and I left this post because I had an opportunity to speak at a mental health conference. And I remember, um, you know, really acknowledging in that space that oftentimes those trauma, like when you're in the middle of something that is that is happening, right? Like people kind of have this empathy and sympathy. When you come out on the other end of it, um, at least, you know, in of that moment, right? Uh, people kind of move their empathy and sympathy on. 
but that's where the real work of healing our traumas actually begin. And so like when you are actually faced with it and then you start to see what is causing this reaction in me, what is causing me to not show up as, you know, the strong, powerful businesswoman that I am, what is causing me to question, you know, all of the decisions that I'm making and making sure that the perception is right. Um, you know, what are, what is causing some of those things for me and then really going to do the work. And so for me, it's opened up a whole new space just over the last 24 hours, because, you know, this conversation really just started happening with me, um, last night, I got a whole nother topic we were getting ready to talk about, but I want to talk about this because it was so fresh for me to recognize that this was something longstanding that I'd been dealing with. And while there are areas of it that I have faced, um, to see it show up in these little day-to-day -day decisions was something that I recognized there's still so much work left to do in this space. So, you know, now that you see it and you've had time to reflect, you know, now is where the real work begins because you have, you know, to your point, years of that trauma that you've got to really work through in order to show up today as the best leader, the best business owner, the best woman that you can, you know, be today going forward. Thank you for sharing that. Are there other thoughts? Oh, go ahead. Were you going to say something, Kevin? Yeah, I just want to thank you for for being uh, open about you know these experiences and really holding space for this. Uh, what this really brings up for me is um, in, in my time in the military, uh, you know, there was a lot of well, there was a few instances where um, you know, I had to confront some of the consequences of my decisions. And um, I think, you know, I, in, a, in these types of situations, you, and especially in traumatic ones, um, those primitive instincts kick in like fight, flight, or, or freeze. And um, looking back at some certain, you know, experiences that, that just come to mind for me, it's like, um freeze was kind of like the, the the reaction that I had on it so like really reflecting back on that um and questioning like why why is it that you that that's the response um I've thankfully been learning how to overcome those or not even overcome them but just being mindful in the moment in these situations so like I, I I'm super thankful that I've found like some some practices like somatic coaching that help you stay grounded in these moments and be present in, in these moments. So um, I'm really grateful for the for the progress that's been made. But yeah, I mean, just trusting that intuition and, and finding yourself in these, especially when you're when that trauma is like re you're experiencing it again, or you're coming to a place where your mind's going to anxiety or just going to to a place where you can get into those um you know those survival instincts and survival mm -hmm. mindset it's a journey so yeah um i'm grateful that you know we can at least hold space to talk about these things so thank you for holding this space of course thank you for joining and sharing that as well so um so uh, as we start to you know wrap up, of course, uh, I always like to give some homework. So again, those of you that are new, I like to just encourage you to like take some of this information in and you know go with it um, and and apply it right somewhere. And so so your homework for this week, should you choose to accept your mission, um, is going to be to you know think about a time or think about something that you do not trust within yourself. And it doesn't have to be the decision making. It doesn't have to be you know any of those things but like take some time to be um, introspective about yourself. Where are you maybe making decisions? Maybe where are you um, freezing, right? Maybe where are you shrinking back? Maybe where are you over-processing, right? In your life, 
and ask yourself, why do you respond that way, right? Like what, what was the trigger? What was the trauma that started you responding in that way? And how is that showing up in your leadership? How is that showing up in your work? How is that showing up with you as a parent or a sister or a brother or a husband or a wife? How does that show itself or present itself in your life, right? And begin to think about um, where do you go? What is the pathway forward? now that you are aware of it. Because oftentimes, and we talked about this a couple of weeks back when we talked about some you know, levels of introspection, oftentimes if you're not aware that this is how you are responding, then you keep right on going in that way. Once you become aware, right? It's, um, who is it that said that my angel? I think once you know better, do better, right? Once you are aware that this is a way that you are um, behaving or reacting to a situation, what opportunities do you now have to go back and begin to course correct that for yourself? And not just course correct that because it's how you're showing up, but also because you be ha have become aware of a trauma maybe that hasn't been healed and shows up in these micro aggressive ways in your life that maybe aren't always overshadowing, right? And maybe sometimes they are. Like maybe sometimes it is an overshadowing of something that's happening in your life and you didn't have a reference point as to like what was causing that. But how do you, you know, how do you begin to heal so that these things do not continue to take you down that path and you have an opportunity, especially as we're stepping into the new year and we're thinking about new goals and, you know, new levels of ourselves, new levels of development, how do we begin to think about that in a way that um, we can be, you know, proactive in healing those traumas? So um, I'm going to, you know, make sure I take one more quick round if there are any questions. But before I let you go, I want to make sure I want to first thank you all for joining me. Um, again, this call is every Wednesday at noon. It is free to join. Please share it out. Um, and this is it, right? We're just talking about uh, real life and how we integrate um, our leadership, our work, our life um, into my dog is having a dream. Wow. That is a dream right now. She wow. is barking at something while she is asleep. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, but how, you know, this calls every Wednesday at noon. Um, and this is what we're digging into. I also want to make sure that you know that I am doing my official launch party and my first mimosas and manifestations brunch on December 11th here in Denver. Um, and I have the next one slated now for Miami in February. So just know that those are coming up. Um, you can go to my website, jaisjohnson.com to register. And I hope to see any of you that are here in the Denver area um, at the mimosas and manifestations brunch, where we are going to be talking about strategic planning um, over some mimosas and brunch um, going into 2023. Are there any other, I am dead. My dog is really dreaming very loudly. I'm so sorry. Um, are there any other thoughts before we close out for this, for this call? Any other thoughts, questions or experiences you want to share? Awesome. All right. Well, I will release you all back to your lunchtime. Um, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next Wednesday. Thank you.